Thank you. The next thing we're going to kind of jump around on the agenda today, we're going to take up 2018-336. Uh, a request for a map change by CC Port Nickel LLC A2 Rural Agricultural Zone District to I3 Heavy Industrial Zoning District for the property designated as portions of ground situated in St. Clair and Mon Palacer Plantation, English Turn Road, Berthwaite, Louisiana. Need someone to offer, please? I'll offer. A second. Got an offer and second. Uh, we're going to now open it up to the floor or this board. Anything? Any comments from the board? Audience? Got anyone presenting this? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm Francis J. Lebrano representing um, CCI Port Nickel. Uh, if, if the board would indulge us, we have a very short PowerPoint presentation. Um, I, I know time is of the essence, so we're going to move through it. 15 minutes, Mr. Brown. 15 minutes is all we need. Hopefully less. Thank you. And uh, what I'm going to do is, if you don't mind, I'm going to hand out the presentation. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, and my name is John Wan. Sorry, okay. Not yet. Okay. Mr. Brown has a full sir. Oh, I'm done. You done? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Your name? My name is John Wan. I'm from uh, CCI, Council for Commodities. Uh, I'm here tonight to present. Uh, our application for rezoning of uh, part of our Port Nickel property from uh, agriculture to industrial heavy okay, three. Speak a little louder for one. Sure. Uh, so my name is Jiang Wan. I'm from CCI. Uh, I'm here tonight to present uh, our application uh, for the rezoning from uh, agriculture to industrial uh, I three. Next page. So this is a property we have right now uh, at the uh, in English turn, uh, just a little bit away from here. So yes, you can see on the on the uh, northern part of it, uh, we have really built a metal storage warehouse, which we have hired uh, indirect and direct people of of 25, uh, create 25 jobs, and we also uh, have 10 to 15 uh, uh, contractors. On the southern part of it, we were enabled in the green dash nine. And that's a property, uh, the most uh, like a third of the southern part which is currently rezoned as agriculture, we wanted rezoned uh, to be industrial heavy three so that we could build a metal plant. Okay. So that's the plant we want to build. It's the most uh, modern and uh, clean technology with the best available control technology metal plant in the world uh, to, uh, to be beneficial to the community in terms of economic impact. So on the next page, uh, as you can see, I want to summarize over here two things for you. Uh, one is on the environmental side, one is on the economic side. On the environmental side, uh, we think methanol is a very clean uh, alternative fuel that can be used in a lot of uh, uh, products in our daily lives. And uh, also, what, with the technology we're using is natural gas to methanol, which is the cleanest technology you can find in the world in terms of methanol production. And also, as I said a moment ago, we're working with the needing what uh, technology providers and the best technology in terms of control emissions so that it, it, in, it produces the least amount of emission and sub under the uh, emission requirement by the, by the state and local government. On the economic side, uh, the leading industri industry uh, consultant on this, Methanol Institute, for a plan like this uh, with uh, over a billion dollar of capex, it could generate. Would you repeat that? Over over a billion dollar of a capital expenditure, a total investment. The jobs can be created direct and indirect of total 2,500 jobs. And uh, the more important thing that we are winning and already working with uh, local, local communities, with the parish council, with, uh, with the different uh, groups to make sure that we can employ no real local people, work with our you know, EPC companies. Uh, that's really what we're, we're planning to do over here. And the economic impact to the, to the, on the tax side is like over $30 million tax revenue. So now a little bit more detail on the, on, on the uh, next couple of slides. 
methanol, what, what, what exactly is methanol? Meth methanol is just, a, it's just like what alcohol, everybody, I mean, a lot of people knows that. And it's typically made either out of natural gas or coal predominantly. It used to be made out of wood, but industrial-wise, either gas or coal. And methanol is harmful, uh, to, be, to be frank, but only ingested uh, or inhaled in large amount. And it's a flammable, uh, typically liquid, uh, and similar to, to, to fuel. And uh, to fuel, just uh, uh, to, to, yeah, to fuel, yeah. And as you can see, what methanol is used for is it two purposes. One is that it's, it's, it can it fuel substitute, and substitute or mix, mixture with uh, gasoline. The other is to make, as a petrochemical uh, feedstock, to make uh, downstream like uh, polymers, fibers, lubricants, and resins. Uh, as you can see on the next page, it's really, like you can see, like maybe a little bit, uh, well, already a little bit, the tax is too, too small. But you can see everything we use in our, in our houses, yet none of that can be made of methanol, such as, you know, carpet, such as, you know, uh, uh, sneakers, you know, cardboard, all those things. It's in our everyday life. So it is, like, petric mostly as a petrochemical feedstock to make those stuff for our daily life use. Next page. Yeah. So, on the, on, on the emission side, uh, you know, this, it is a, a petrochemical uh, process. So what we did over here is to compare the emission uh, in terms of comparison with the two plants that within the neighbor, within the same, about the same region. The one, uh, the, the green dot on the, on the map, as you can see in the presentation, is our plant the, to be built. And the light blue one is the Shell Med refinery. And the yellow one is the P66 refinery. On the next page, we compare the total emission out of these three, three uh, different plants in, among the major emission pollutants. The first one on the top right, uh, on top left, is, is the particular matter. As you can see, the green one represents CCI, and the two blue ones on the, on the, on the, on the right represent the two uh, re refining plants, and the YCI plant is another methanol plant in the construction in, the, uh, in St. James Parish. As you can see, the, you know, on the particular matter, on the socks and knocks, and on the carbon dioxide and the volatile organic compounds, everything we have is much smaller compared to the two refinery plants nearby. And it really has the best technology, uh, as you can see in the next couple of pages. So page nine, the next page is the one we have worked for a year, like over a year now, with uh, Air Nikit and, and Wood Group, the leading technology provider in methanol and the leading EPC company in the industry. Uh, so this, you know, the, the, the one to the, to the right it was, uh, with the uh, uh, pink uh, diagram, that's the re reference plant design. As you can see, we uh, specifically design the, uh, put the, like, the retention ponds or these like, uh, wastewater treatment ponds to the, su to the su southern part of the uh, property so that it will have minimal impact uh, to the communities. While we'll put all the heavy equipment more to the cent center of, the, of the, our property. So next page, uh, we specifically on two things uh, work well uh, in, with our uh, technology providers. One is we use the best control, available control technology. For example, we, the, we use the, uh, the uh, uh, SOX, uh, what, what they call selective catalytic reduction, SCR, so that the NOx emission would be no, as no as what we presented you on the, on the previous page. And in, in, um, among other things, like we use the methanol tanks, we use the marine loading, you know, uh, fugitive emissions, all of those things to make the emissions as low as possible. Also on the design side, we make it to be sure that all the, as I said a moment ago, moment ago all the major equipment were towards to the center, rather than you know, the, the more less easy part, like water retention ponds, all those ponds would be to the southern part of the property, so that would be less, uh, less intrusive to the community. So we have, this is a planned uh, rendering that we got from our technology provides, uh, uh, provided us. I think we have all the uh, pieces over here uh, for the design of the plant to be the most efficient, most technology available, and the least amount of uh, emissions to the community. So in terms of the economic impact, I just want to summarize over here one more time. Uh, so our plant is about one, uh, over like 1.2 to 1.3 billion uh, total investment. And it, it, it would generate 1.7 million ton of uh, uh, methanol produce, uh, production every year. And uh, 
the economic impact, as I said, is over 2,000 construction jobs and direct in indirect jobs of over 500. And the overall economic com combined upstream downstream industries re related to this particular project is going to be where over 1.5 billion dollars. And uh, last thing I want to summarize two, uh, two things. One is that uh, in terms of our execution, we really focus on two things: finding the right partner, meaning the financing partner with needing global uh, banks to make it happen with the, you know, uh, method of downstream customers to make sure our product can be sold. But more importantly, working with the local community, with the parish, with the council, with all of you over here and, and lo lo local community to understand their concerns, their issues, uh, such as we had a town hall meeting on September the 26th. A lot of folks showed up over there and we had a really good discussion. And that's exactly the commitment that we have to, to make this thing work, not only for the benefit of the company, of the investors, but more importantly for the community. And also on the, on, the, on the execution commitment, as I said, we want to be the no-cost producer to be really efficient so that we can, the business will stay for now and stay profitable and be beneficial to the community. Last page, I just want to quickly summarize the several, several key questions that were asked and uh, we try to address. But just to be uh, uh, perfect, uh, uh, transparent over here, we don't have all the answers that people ask at the, at the town hall meeting but we're going to address them uh, step by step to, with our partners, in particular our technology and EPC uh, technology and engineering companies to work it out. And with the local community, with the local government to help out. A couple of issues uh, that got uh, asked that sort of I would summarize over here. One is on the, on, the, on, the, on the air pollution, the noise, the smell, and we got really good confirmation from uh, Air Nikit company that this thing is really like you cannot hear the noise once you step out of the plant boundary. And it doesn't have any smell because all the emissions is, is really clean. And also, like this process, I, I sort of skipped a little bit. This process is really like natural gas, come, pipeline quality natural gas coming in, water and methanol coming out. And methanol is going to be stored in tanks and be on a ship to the overseas, to the overseas market. So it's really nothing compared to that like refining of a power plant. It's just such a clean process. And uh, the, the, all the you know, water and wastewater will be treated with with, we have a retention ponds and all the waste wastewater treatment ponds the southern part of the property. It will be treated according to the federal and, and the state regulation and it will be tested and it will only be discharged once you know, the, the water is fit every, every requirement and standard regulated by, by, by the state and, and, and federal government. And the second thing is, is construction and traffic, especially you have you know, 2,000 people working on the site and you know, the ferries and the road uh, so on and so forth. This thing I think you know, what what uh, Air Nikit and Wood Group put together, they have a... What's the name that you're saying, Air? Air Nikit. Uh, that's the tech and technology provider, uh, L-I-Q-I-D-E. So they have a, already had an uh, extensive transportation and logistics plan. Uh, you, they re estimated roughly about you know, 10 cars per minute for a maximum one hour, about twice a day. Uh, so that's sort of the construction, construction traffic we're talking about. And on the ferry side, I think we will we, we'll be really uh, talking to the local government, local community, how we can resolve the ferry issue. Uh, I mean, those things we don't have an answer right now, but we're, we're more than happy to talk to local people to sort it out. It is, as I said at the, at the town hall meeting, it is the best interest of both the community and the, as a project company to make things work for, you know, on the construction traffic side, work for both sides. Uh, and, and again, last thing, the local, local employment. As I said many times, uh, uh, meeting with Councilman uh, Bartholomew and, and uh, other people, we uh, absolutely we want to do our best to work with the local community, have a vocational kind of a training program to make sure we can, and work with the EPC company to make sure we can employ as many uh, local, local people as possible. That's all I have. Thanks for your attention. Thank you. Okay. Anyone from the board have any questions? Yeah. Uh, what, what, uh, what will you be using to make methanol? We use pipeline quality natural gas. Uh, we would, 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 you know, ship the, uh, build a pipe, natural pipeline from one of the interstate sorry, pipes. Sorry, I'm not hearing that. We're using pipeline quality natural gas. And through the reaction process, make it to methanol. And we'll ship methanol out to overseas market. And methanol will be, uh, in overseas, will be turned into what we call olefins. And olefins will be fabricated into the polymers, raisins, things like that. Yeah. Here we only produce methanol. That's it. And my other concern is, uh, if 
we get uh, another hurricane like Isaac, they had like 15, 20 feet of water there. Uh, will there ever be any uh, chemicals or methanol being escaped into the waters? Or do you have any kind of insurances that that won't happen? Yeah, you, you, two, two points. One is that absolutely uh, on the insurance side, is the best interest of the developer, of the investor, to have that kind of protection. But more importantly, on the on the, on the uh, uh, real protection side is that we are, there are several options. One is elevate, elevate the, you know, the, the entire, uh, entire plant. The other is to build a wall. We are thinking about both options to make sure that what's the best there in terms of you know, protection for the community as well as economically. What about the storage tanks? Uh, oh, the sto uh, oh that, the, that is like you have the, uh, you have the waterproof, the leak proof uh, within, the, within that boundary of, of those three big tanks we're designed. That's for sure, yes. How will it be shipped out? Will it be uh, um, ships? Uh, ships. Railroad, Predom you know, ships. Predominantly ships. Okay, just ships, that's it? Yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Hey, you'll be, uh, Marco. He asked one question. He answered it. Anyone else? Uh, you'll be, will you be generating your own power there, or you'll be using low power as far as electricity? Yeah, we'll use partially from the, the grid, but we have a steam turbine generator ourselves using like the extra steam we generate from the, cat, from the chemical reaction process and use the drive part of the, part of the, uh, the, uh, the equipment. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Now, how many, many full-time jobs will there be in this plant? Of, uh, what's the average pay for those jobs? Uh, on the plant itself, the plant would in, directly employ about 60 people. Average paying job is about seventy thousand dollars, and indirect that's the people employed by the plant. But we have like a maintenance pro maintenance program, which would be utilizing people, you know the contractors, steel mills, and, and people like that. That an estimate is about uh, about another fifty people uh, outside you know the plant itself. And then you know the the uh, the the the, pipe, the natural gas pipeline associated with with this project. And then the shipping associated with the project, that estimated another you know, 40, 60 indirect jobs. So the direct jobs at the plant are about 60, indirect about over, over, over 100. Hey, how many people you said? Uh, sir, excuse me. Sorry, uh, sir. Sir. Oh, sorry. I can't hear. Uh, so it's at the plant, 60, plant employment, and indirectly related Somebody, to the- Excuse me, we're going to get to them. Let's finish the board first, please. Then we can- Anyone else? Okay. Yes, sir. I think you ought to tell the audience to answer the computer to ask questions. Just at one point, if you don't mind. I'm sorry? I, I think you ought to be able to tell that part of the, because each head is head turned this way, they probably couldn't hear the answer. Right. They might generate more. The microphone is picking it up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, if it's old. Yeah, so the, the plant would generate 60 jobs employed directly by the plant. But upstream, downstream, <coughs> related to the, the plant activities would generate another 100 jobs. Anyone else from the table? Okay, thank you, sir. I, thank I you, sir. I have one more question. Wait, I'm sorry. It's primarily going to be marine, but there's rails there now. Is the rail going to be used some as well to move this product? You never said never. I mean, you know, to be perfectly honest, right? But the, the reason we don't think that that's where we're going to predominantly shift to the overseas market is because the pricing the overseas is better off. The U.S. metal is not a big market, and it's been stagnant and not really growing that much. Uh, people, you see a lot of, uh, you know, Asia, Asia, in particular Asian countries try to build methanol plants over here, like the YCI plant in St. James, and the other plant over here, it's really the, the big market in Asia. That's where the demand grows. Is. People over there, they don't have enough crude oil. They use methanol to make into olefins, substituting for petrochemicals, for naphtha and those things. That's where this thing is, is, is bonded. So trucking... Trucking is out of question. It's just so uneconomical to use truck. Yeah, so uneconomical. Uneconomical, yeah. Anyone else at the table? <coughs> okay, thank you, Mr. Wang. Thank you so much, Chairman. Anyone else for? We have a Robert L. Thomas.
Thank you very much. My name is Robert L. Thomas. My office is at 8207 Highway 23 in Bell Chase. I'm the executive director of the Plaquemines Association of Business and Industry. Uh, first, thanks to the board for allowing me to speak tonight. Second, I'd like to thank CCI for coming to Plaquemines Parish. What a tremendous opportunity that we have tonight. CCI is a partner in Plaquemines Parish who's going to bring much needed sales taxes, sales and use taxes, it's going to bring property taxes, and most importantly, it's going to bring jobs to Plaquemines Parish. We know the entire parish is in need of infrastructure, especially Councilman Bartholomew has been touting the need on the East Bank. There's a prime opportunity to provide the people with the, with the services they deserve. Furthermore, some of the annual millage build and collected for CCI's investment will be used by the Plaquemines Parish Schools. This will to align curriculum with employers' requirements to order and to provide workforce ready employees for future development in Plaquemines Parish. I've got to tell you, uh, Mr. Wang mentioned about the town hall meeting a couple of weeks ago in Braithwaite, and not only that night, but, but any time we had a question, it was, it was answered immediately. So we definitely appreciate their transparency. We, we, they've answered every one of our questions, they've addressed our concerns. So uh, the, the Business Association is very much in support of this and encourages the board to adopt their uh, their request tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, well, Lori and Ken Salvatore, you four? I'm four. You, guys, you want to say something? Not really. I'm uh, sorry. Okay. He said everything. What's right. the name? Thank you. The name. Her name. Well, you want to name, please? Aloma. A L O M A. Sapsano, S A V A S T A N O. Mr. Sandy Sanders. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Huh? That's his mic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sandy Sanders. I am the executive director of Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District. I live here in the parish uh, on the Naval Air Station, uh, 324 Ticonderoga Street. <clears throat> I've been here five and a half years, and I'm very proud to call Plaquemines my home. I've moved my family here. I came here to build a port, and uh, when I first got here, I wasn't sure how I was going to do this. But the first thing I came to know is, is the great people here, hardworking folks. And the next thing I noticed is that there was a, an abundance of land here that we could develop, that we needed to diversify our economy off the oil and gas. I feel that I am the primary person for economic development here. So I'd like to speak not only to CCI, but companies like CCI. As an economic development person, I look for companies that manufacture feedstock that goes into other products. Why? Well, if you look at the cost of a widget, it's based on the transportation cost, which can be 47% of that cost, and also the cost of getting the feedstock to your manufacturing facility to produce that product. If you look at the city of Pittsburgh, it was the steel capital of the world. Why? Because all the feedstock that went in making steel, coal, coke, sulfur, it was all right there. And then the transportation they system they had, the Ohio River, the Chicago River, the Mississippi River, they drove that price down to deliver that product around the world. Well, what we have here is the Mississippi River, and this product's gonna be mainly exported. It's gonna improve commerce on the river, but also equally important is the feedstock that is here. That particular feedstock, that methanol, 
goes into so many products. And I tell you, manufacturing facilities look at where the feedstock is and can I locate a business close to there to cut down on my overhead to use that feedstock to produce, as John said, tennis shoes, car interiors, carpets, etc. So again, an economic development person, you want to locate where your transportation is the best and your food feedstock is plentiful to provide multiple products. This is a very big win, not only for CCI, but also for our location. We have ample room that we can put in for manufacturing facilities, and we can do it where manufacturing and industry can live with the environment. I'm building a green, environmentally friendly port, and this is uh, any port director like me would be glad to have a CCI type company come to their vicinity. Any questions? That's my time? All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We have, uh, did I skip Joel? I can't pronounce it, but I have it written here. Is it F-I-E? Figginshoe. Figginshoe the last name. Okay. Hi, my name is Joel Figginshoe. I'm a resident of Bell Chase. I live at 121 Theta Street in Bell Chase. And I've been employed uh, in and around the AMAX facility. My company actually maintains the property right now. And I've been in and around the AMAX facility through three businesses in probably 40 years. So the main reason just coming is to recommend and I think the economic development is slowly needed on the East Bank and I hope the council considers the plant and I highly recommend you support it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Joel Figginshu, F-I-E-G-E-N-S-C-H-U-E. -E -E. Blake Sawyers. Oh no, he was he was brought to, he's the engineer, brought to answer any questions, so we can take him off the list. Okay, this is, uh, again, Mark Garrett. First. Hello, Mark Garrett, 3321 English Turn Road, 2731 Highway 39. Uh, properties on both highways, front and back of the projected thing. I'm uh, against it because of the, um, the buffer zones that was supposed to be kept as far as the zoning thing, the way we all hear now. They got the last part of the zoning done last time at the meeting. Um, I think it was in 2015. Now they're trying to get the next section, which is further south. Um, that's, I think, is A2, agricultural and they're trying to get it to heavy industrial, the same as the other portion. Um, they said the only reason they need to do that is the uh, tension pond, whatever would, I know water runs down, why they said they're not using too much of the um, rail, which is further back behind their property where a retention pond could fit. My only thing is why they want this section, um, heavy industrial, if they're only putting in a retention pond which is treating all that water. Um, so once they get it passed, they can do whatever they want there. They can change their plans, do whatever they want. So that might be making the plant bigger, further, further towards homes, which um, Valero, which they brought up, is trying to buy property to make green zones in, in between the residents to separate the noise and the smells and everything, which they buy in almost a lot, a few people is holding out, but if you go to the Valero site, there's sections of land that's being bought. They each one little bitty piece at a time. They're trying to put a buffer zone, and if they they make this one section, which we're here today to do, to make it industrial, it's going to be right on side of people's houses, which and they already own the river rights, which they just trying to make their river rights be. They could do what they want on the river. They're trying to make their river site even with their property as, you know, that square. The actual square that that's made, you can cut that in half. The closest place to their yellow mark 
you cut that green section in half and it's already industrial, that half. The second half is what they're trying to make for the south. That's, and the rail, that's another thing. If they bring in anything by rail, I don't know if we can handle it anymore. They're going to have to call the cops on a lot of people. That's 45 minutes an hour waiting for rail now. And that's not only affecting Braithwaite, that's affecting all the way to Point Lahash, Bohemia. So that's why I'm against it. Thank you. Alan J. Gilgrossi. Gil Gilgrossi. All right. I'll believe you. Thank you. <laughs> it's right, though. Can you you need me to say that again? And spell it. Alan, A L A N, J. Dio Gracias, D E O G R A C I A S. 40, 71, English Town Road, Sprite Wheeler really within. <clears throat> Look, I'm up here because I'm within 200 yards from the zone, the buffer zone of the line. Uh, have a beautiful home. There's about 10 properties in that area there where Highway 39 comes around to the ferry store, to the landing. I'm 72 years old. What happens to the value of my property and our property? You know, uh, that's what I'm worried about. Uh, what's, what's for us? Uh, you know, uh, I'm for all the jobs. I worked at Amax for six or seven years. I worked at Amax, made a living there. But I'm in this immediate area that, look, the water knocked us down, the storm knocked us down, and this can't help the property value anymore. That, you know, that's all I got to say. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Robert J. Landry. Robert J. Landry, 4005 English Turn Road, Breakway. Okay, so first I'm going to tell you guys, we're not against your plan. And I think I can speak for all these guys here that I don't know how many of y'all was at the last meeting we had with this, but we're not against the plan. Okay, I, I know. I worked in a plant 43 years. You're talking about the Valero plant? I worked there since I was 18 years old. So I know what plants are. I know what the noise is. I know what happens in plants. I really know that the rules changed as we went along. Things got better and better. And that's, that's a fact. You know, we had a lot of fumes in the early days. Every day I went on smell of gasoline. It got better and better and better when I retired. I retired a, two, a year and a half ago. But I worked at the plant for I was the top manager in that plant, maintenance manager, for like 38 years. So I was the guy knocking on the neighbor's doors. If you know the, the spread for the Valero plant, which is the Murphy Oil plant, for people who don't know, it's the Murphy Oil plant, Merrill. It was all subdivision. When it built the plant, it was all agriculture. It was growing tomatoes on the side of the plant, both sides. It's old farmers that lived there. And everybody had farms. That's what St. Bernard Parish was at the time. Time went on, zone changes, like we're doing now, change, change, change. And it wound up being Jacob Drive was right on the side of the refinery, a hundred foot away. They had a street with houses on both sides. Same thing on the, on, the, on the other side, it was a trailer park. And then it was another subdivision. And he's right, somebody mentioned that Murphy's trying to buy. After Hurricane Katrina, we had a major oil spill. Our tanks, over. we had a, a breach in the tank. We floated the tank, spilled oil, and we bought, through a class action suit, I don't know, six streets over to the left, and, and, and we had to clean it all up, and then we made it a buffer zone. Murphy owns, well, now it's Valero, excuse me, but everything's owned. If you go over there now, it's green grass. All right? They even built an office building on the property. It's green grass, a buffer zone. And they all actively pursued. They bought another trailer park right on the other side of it. On the, on the other side, the down road side, they bought another trailer park. And they're trying to buy the trailer park right next to it. So they are actually trying today, 
with all the controls, environmental controls, Murphy, uh, Valero, excuse me, is still trying to buy land to create a buffer zone for the neighborhood. They want to be good neighbors, and they are good neighbors. They put a lot of money in the neighborhood. You see it. They, they go to charities. Valero is a big time giver to help the parish and, and children and, you know, stand on the bayou if you read all the newspaper. They're doing all that. They, but they still want that buffer zone because they know no matter what we do, technology is so great, computer driven, we still have human error and we still have issues. And when we have issues, you have upsets. When you have upsets, it creates problems for the neighbors. No doubt about it, it's going to happen. It's just human nature. That's okay. 30 seconds. What's that? 30 seconds. That's all I got? Can we deal anything from uh, everybody else? You live on a property line. All right, I live on a property line there. I'm not a get your plant. We agreed the last meeting to keep this buffer zone, and we all walked out of here happy because y'all left our buffer zone, the one you're trying to change now. If you guys can leave it like it is and build your plant on your property, we're okay with that. But leave the agricultural part y'all want to change tonight like it is, and we won't have a problem. If you don't do that, I know. I go outside at night, and I see lightning bugs. I'm not going to see that. I'm just, I'm just telling you. I'm not going to see that. It's going to be light, noise. You know, I mean, I'm not against you. But leave the buffer zone like you got it right now. Don't change this thing, this agriculture part y'all trying to change right now. Leave it like it is. And find room to build your plant on your property you got now. Go in the front of it. It's all clean grass. He cuts it. It's all clean grass. Go in the front, put your pine right in the front. And run the pipes. It might cost you a few more dollars, but run the pipes from the front of the plant. And just keep on that one side. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank Next one is Joshua. Joshua Brockhouse. Okay. Uh, my property is at 3299 Highway 39, which is no down at the bottom, a little south, right there, that cleared open area right there. <coughs> okay. So pretty much everybody I know around in that whole section you're looking at and even below is against the plan. I haven't talked to hardly anybody that's for the plan. People move over there because it's rural. It's you're getting away from the towns, you're getting away from all the industrial, you're getting away from all the plants from further up the road. You're getting away from everything. That's why people move to Braithwaite. There's nothing else there. There's nothing else there. I built back twice down there. I have multiple properties down there. I'm waiting. My property's been sitting waiting to build my house until we figure out what's going on with the plant. I've been waiting for the last four years to figure out what's going on with the plan. When they're talking about retention ponds, the retention ponds from the old AMAX is way up, a little bit further up, a little for, right there. That's where the retention ponds are from the old AMAX. I had an environmental engineer come in and test soil around my property, and it still leached from those retention ponds all the way coming down to me. All the way from up there to down there. So you can imagine if they put retention ponds on that south property line, they will have leaching. And I don't know if anybody is familiar with retention ponds. I worked at plants before. You don't want to go nowhere near them. They're they not clean. <coughs> I don't care how much you, you, you clean the water. They're not clean. I don't know anybody. I, who in here would want to live in an industrial zone? Who would want to live next to a plant? out of anybody in here. So basically, economic, I own my company. I can see how this benefits the parish as a whole as far as the econ economy of it. It is going to be a moneymaker. Your residents, you're throwing your residents out, 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 out in the air. It's, it's basically saying, I'm not worried about my residents. I'm worried about money. I'm worried about making money for the parish. And it will be. It'll be a big money maker. But as far as the residents, you could listen to the residents. You can talk to the residents. No resident wants their property to go down in value, which that's what would happen. Everywhere that you research an industrial area, when an industrial area is made, the residential area goes down in value. Every, every single case scenario that you research, it goes down in the area. So the long run, yeah. It, it, it's a lot of money for the, for, the, for the parish, 
but you all throw in the residents that came back multiple times that didn't get a wild, that didn't get protection, that always come back. You throw in those residents out saying, we don't care about you. We can't even give you a buffer zone to protect you against noise, against the smells, to protect you against the, all of those elements. That's what it's basically saying to the residents in a whole. And like I said, I, I have a company in the parish. I have multiple properties in the parish. I'm waiting to see what this plant's going to do to decide if I'm leaving the parish, if I'm selling out and leaving the parish. That's, I've been sitting on my property. I got $500,000 worth of property right up in that, that in the one section. Sitting on my property waiting to see what's going on with this plant. So I don't know anybody here. If, if somebody here can raise their hand, who would want to live next to an industrial plant? Who would want to take and live on side of a plant? Regardless of how clean the plant is, does anybody want to live next to one? And there's no hands. So that's what I'm saying. You throw in the president, you, you, your residents are, are you know, they're they not, they not being listened to. They're not being received when they're saying they don't want it. Not the plant. The plant's fine. They don't want it without a buffer zone. We want buffer zone. Thank you. Thank you all. I neglected to call two in favor of your, I don't know, are they still here, or Paul Hogan? No, I'm here, but I didn't, I didn't sign for that one. I might have signed it on accident. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Not neglecting anyone else on this one? Questions on the board? Yeah, uh, Mr. Joel. I have a question for the gentleman right now. Yeah, um, after hearing the, the guys against it, I uh, uh, question why Why do you have to change this to uh, an industri uh, industrial zone here? Why couldn't you leave the little buffer zone? And build, you know, build off to the north. The, the reason is that the metals warehouse uh, currently employs like 20, 30 people. And it's already Sorry, the, metal the metals warehouse that we have over there. You see on that, on that page, that's already uh, operating business. It employs a total of like, 40 people, direct and indirect. And it also has a lot of uh, metals stored on that, uh, on that facility. And the reason we specifically have that design, you go to that, the, the, the diagram page, the page nine-ish. Yeah, that, that page. The reason we specifically designed that is for, exactly for that, you know, the, to the left, that's the metals warehouse. We cannot really move, because that, as I said, it's already in operation and it has been certified with the help of the local government to be the foreign trade zone. Uh, you know, we just foreign can't, trade foreign trade, foreign trade zone. Uh, we cannot just move that. And specifically with design this is because we don't want, it, this is like the reference plan design, which we have from Air Nikit and Wood Group, which is the most efficient and least uh, emission uh, 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 amount generated out of it, most efficient design. And we specifically, uh, I understand that these uh, the na the, uh, our neighbor's point of view, uh, we specifically put the major equipment to the middle close to the metal warehouse, and the, all the other part is like the you know, uh, uh, retention ponds, rainwater, storm water, which is really like you know, the, run, you know, the water overflow into, for temporary storage before it's discharged to, to, to the river. Yeah. Do you, do you have to make the whole thing industrial? Why can't you do two thirds or one half? The one with the design we have, you, you see, as you see from that, from that diagram, it's, it actually occupies the entire green zone, the green uh, uh, to, the, to, to, to the previous page. Yeah, yeah. But couldn't the pond be located behind it or something, you know, in the rear? There's, there's no, other, no, no other piece of land over there. Yeah. Like, this, this, like this is a plant design that, that will be most efficient to need this way. Yeah. No, I understand the concern about having some kind of buffer zone. That's what I was saying. Uh, 
it could just use it. Is there an option for you to reconfigure this in some way so that you can put some sort of tree buffer or something in? Is there going to be a way that you could, because it sounds like the, they're not t upset about the plant as long as there's some visibility and some other kind of buffers. And this is right up against the property line and you're going to have a second phase right up against the highway. So it seems like you're jamming everything in. Can you reconfigure it in a way that you can deal with the public and their needs? Yeah, if, if, first thing, thanks for the question. Uh, First of all, that would be like roughly to the to the uh, to the center of the uh, of the uh, plant or to the to the edge of the uh, pond to the property line. It's about a hundred oh, about a hundred feet. The, 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 the most a hundred feet. On the southern border. Yeah, it's about a hundred feet. Like it's it's not a knot, but still, I mean, the, that part of the trees will be there for sure. Okay. Yeah. So you're you're promising these folks who are next door that they're going to have trees. Yeah, absolutely there will be trees. Not not the not the several hundred yards of, but there will be trees for sure. Oh absolutely, yes, yes. Absolutely. Yes. I know I can't say nothing, right? Anyone else on the table? Yeah, I, I got a question. About how many homes are there, say, on the southern end within that half a mile or a mile of the property line? Is that how many homes are there? Yeah, it's about a half a mile or a mile below the property line. On the southern end? At least uh, 10, ten houses. One. Wait, wait, hold on. Sir? Mike. Mike, There's at least 10 houses uh, from the property line, where the, the pond is, to Highway 39, where it makes that 90. You have the ferry store. So there's approximately 10 houses, no more than that, that's in that zone there. Could you say your name again, sir? Sir, could you say your name again? Alan J. Dio Gracia. Anyone else on the table? Can I have one question? Uh, was, any, was there any uh, thought about using existing ponds uh, that's behind the uh, CCI metal storage? Uh, are y'all part of CCI metal storage also? Uh, uh, that's part of your business also? Yeah, that's that's a uh, storage business, yes. Well, like, like the gentleman said, they had ponds there that, that he, said, he referenced that, that has issues that, that he said, but are those ponds still usable? Are they still being used for anything? That's, that pond is not, is not, is not uh, used right now. No. I think it was one. They contaminated. <laughs> <laughs> They have one on the front side. Hold on, hold on, hold it, hold it. Referring to the Virginia Enterprise that's installed on Highway 39, that's AMAX's property, not CCI's property. So they wouldn't be able to use those. What is it? Mark Gower, 2731 Highway 39. Mr. Mark. Anyone else on the table? Okay, we have a motion on the floor and second. It is a request for a map change by CCI Port Nickel LLC A2 Rural or Agricultural Zoning District to I3 Heavy Industrial. Zoning district for the property designated as portion of ground situated in St. Clair and Montpelier Plantation, English Road, Birthweight, Louisiana. Madam Secretary, we're going to go. Oh, roll call. I need the motion. It's been the made a second. No, that was just a Who discussion. made the motion and who seconded it? I'll make a motion to accept the change as written. A second. Second. District 1, Mr. Joel Frederick. I'm going to vote for it. District 2, Mr. Brian Millay. For District three, Ms. Heidi Lee. Four. District four, Mr. James Hornet. Four. <clears throat> District five, Mr. Jeff DeMarco. Yes. District six, Mr. Mike Strasoni. Four. 
You'll be hearing from the council as to a date when they bring it up before the council. Thank you.